Oh, so now back to this. Brought home a spring compressor. I want to get the upper ball joints out today. I want to get the springs out today. And obviously the shocks. Uh, at a minimum. So, uh, I'm not going to paint or detail anything today. I'm going to leave that. Uh, I want to get some of the shit out of the garage. Not because of paint, just to clean this place up so we can continue working. And I want to set up my table here. And then we'll start detailing the pieces and get them under the front end. Not a major detailing, but when you look under there, a nice clean look is what we're going for. And obviously, everything being nice and tight and safe. So, um, okay, guys. Okay. Even with the best of tools, you got to be careful. This will kill you, without a doubt. So, there's the spring. This is a pretty nice compressor. It's got safety pins that come down. Um... It's easy to operate on this car because the fender's off. Here's the spring perch. Okay, which went up. I think it went like this. I got it marked. Something. Nope, it's like this. Let me go zoom one way. Just like this. Okay, because you can see where the end of the spring ends and ends. Okay, there is a big end and a small end. Uh, in the old days, this was the size of the coil. Starting 1970, when they chopped the top and put the shot coming out the top, they left it a tight coil and then went bigger. I actually have spaces to put in here, aluminum blocks, that fit tightly to the bore sticking down and then continue down in here so they can't pop out. Uh, but I wasn't going that route. Okay. Uh, these are the bushings we're changing. Okay, and obviously we're going to take these shocks off and remount them. These are GM shocks. Uh, there is nothing wrong with them other than the rust on them. So, we'll detail these out and put this back. The reason I took it off as an assembly like this is these bolts were rusty. And I knew that would break my bolts. So, we're going to replace those bolts on the bottom of the shocks. The difference is, is AMC takes this flat plate welds it to the bottom of the shock then puts a piece of rubber in here and here and it pivots on it okay GM obviously does it different so I made up two little spaces back in the day I actually had a nut and put these in and that was it these are all brand new okay I drill an eighth inch hole in the center okay you can whack these off with an air chisel I don't have an air chisel home I forgot it okay then I just open it up to whatever size this is. And it just takes care of most of the rivet. And I just tap it off with the chisel. If you got a normal, decent drill bit, you should cut this with. Do that the other two, and we'll whack it off. There you go, here's a boo-boo. The little booger I took out of there. When I went to drill it with the bigger bit, I actually slipped off. And it went between there and the ball joint, and just took a little sliver out. Other than that, everything's fine. Um, okay, well this all needs cleaning. But my problem is, is the brush, I left it work. So we gotta clean this. We're gonna clean the little bracket for the stop. Just pretty much clean on the other side. And then go over these rails a little bit more. We did sand them up to here. Just go over them a little bit. This is all gonna be blacked out under coating except for the arm. The arm's gonna be painted satin black. So all this will be undercoated, including the pocket in here and up in here and all in here, so it'll all be blacked out. So the control arms will be satin black. The box will be a mixture of aluminum, cast iron, and satin black. Uh, the spring perches and all this stuff here, that'll all just be satin black. The springs will be satin black. The steering linkage will be satin black with a series of new nuts and cotter pins. The idler arm, the arm that swings will be satin black. The piece that goes up will be cast iron to match the uh, box. So when you look in there, um, the knuckles and everything you saw 
that whole assembly will be cast iron. So and the rotors will be rotor color. <laughs> Rust. So so when you bend down and look, it'll add a little contrast and it just won't look like you went on there with a brush. Um, and then they said the bottom of the rails we got to do. And I want to unstrap this thing and I'd like to move the car. But uh, either way, I got to do it to put the box in. I'm just not in the mood to uh, mask off and inhale paint today or do the box. So tomorrow night we'll do the we'll do the power steering box and get some of that steering linkage done. And probably the strut rods. Um, the steering box we're gonna have to paint like the the arm and the rag joint set up and let that sit overnight. Then we'll mask it off. Then we'll do the rest of cast iron and then the block of aluminum on the top will just be masked off and just stay the way it is. I'll give it when you look down it'll give it you know a multicolored look like you gave a crap. Uh, and that's it. I don't want to get the back city's control lumps. That's going to be fun. So, um, the way I did it on my car was I just masked this and went on the back side and just shot paint in here. And it got all of this and it got in both sides. So, we'll see. So, I got the undercoating. I don't have the cast iron. So, uh, I'm not in the mood to inhale the, the uh, undercoating either. So, uh, with that said, we didn't do a lot today, but we did what we had to do here at the two ball joints. Really not into touching these things without my gloves on, my hands are dirty enough. But, uh, like I said, the resistance I feel is just a boot. Boots are wasted. There was no up and down movement in, in, in these. But they were they definitely were loose uh, like I said all the load is on these the load comes when the cars on the ground the load comes from the top to the upper part of the control arm and then the tire wants to kick out or kick in it doesn't really matter and it puts a side load on that ball joint big time okay then all the turning force and everything attached with it and driving and, you know all the happy shit that goes with it but uh, and then the bottom one just keeps the arm from doing its thing. That's it, it just like pivots on it. And the bottom one's as beefy as the top one. So the only saving grace when they design these, let me turn up the radio. It's a ball and socket obviously, but the way the load is, the cup pushes on top of the ball to keep them compressed. Okay, the gallant outside is completely opposite. The lower ball joint sits like this, and the load is on the cup, and they pop out. And uh, very bad, very bad. I don't know who the engineers were. I mean, it's not, I'm not going to say it isn't Mitsu's fault, but a lot of people did it that way. Um, I guess they say, well, the ball joint was good this way, it's got to be good that way, but it's a fraction of the amount of surface area. And this way, they do pop. I remember the Fords popping. I don't know how much different this is than a Mustang one. I haven't seen a Mustang one in a billion years, but I remember Mustang ones five years old popping out. So. And the front, then the tire just goes boop to the ground. <laughs> so, uh, so with all that said, uh, car should be good when we're done. Yeah, I'm not in the mood to lay under the back right now and put those shocks on. I'm gonna do that when the uh, front end is down. These have more mileage on them laying in the box than they do on the actual car. Uh, these are different than the new Lakewoods. They are definitely different. When I got them from the guy, he gave me all the bushings, everything, and the shock extenders. And the reason you need the shock extenders is when these cars launch, the axle actually comes down out of the car. And if the shock is too short, the shock keeps it from coming down. And you need the tire to wail down to the ground to get traction, especially in the right rear one. If you limit it, it doesn't push down to the ground and bite, and you spin. So he gave me those. Um, I got these, if you guys don't remember, I got these from the same guy I got the pump from, the distributor from, this tranny from, uh, what else did we get? I got a bunch of good things, those wires that we're not using from, um, so, which we'll call it, I guess that's going to be it guys, like I said, hopefully the new springs that come are right, I ordered V8 wagon springs exactly what I ordered. Um, I don't want this thing to sit like a gasser, but I don't want it laying on the ground either. 
and uh, we'll see how it works out as it settles and as the months go on if it settles too low then maybe I will put those faces in the top um, but uh, we'll see like I said and uh, that's gonna be it guys I gotta organize and get some of the shit to the storage unit and get some more shit bolted on so I want to get the box in before I put the pump on just give me more room to get my hands down here and obviously get to the rag joint so uh, and I would like to paint the sides before I mean you can see the dirt that fell through it almost looks like I didn't paint it down there that was from all the uh, hammering and yeah, both sides have it <laughs> um, what's it called? What's it called? I want to get the sides painted so if I put new hardware on and you look in the well you see the new hardware it's the little shit guys it's all the same in the end the same money same effort same everything it's just the order you do it so uh okay guys i'm out of here